Okay. Uh, <clears throat> um, I'm glad you do it. Let me start doing it. Yeah, uh, let me tell a story why, why I started to write. Is that okay? Yeah. Mm. Well, the reason why I started to write in 1969 was uh, I was writing for the Micmac News already. And uh, I was writing little stories and poems and songs and everything. And uh, my one of my children came in and uh, told me she saw something on a book and showed it to me. And it was... Uh, Neg negative something about natives. I don't remember what it was, but it was negative. So I I looked at my husband and I said he was there. I said, uh, why is there this kind of stuff in schools? Why does my child have to read the negative part about our people? I said, you're a counselor. Remove those books. Make noise. And, uh, well, lots of people were thinking that way, so... So, you know, women are not afraid to say something like that. If they don't like it, men too. But women, a child tells the mother, most of the things that uh, he fears or doesn't like about school. So I began to write. I told I told my husband, "Who's going? Who is going to uh, write beautiful stuff about us? And uh, who's going to do that? Because nobody is." And he looked at me, I remember, and my children were there. Why don't you do it? That was, that's all he said. Why don't you do it? Because he knew I was writing. So that's how it started. I began to write beautiful stories using poetry. I don't know why poetry, because I was not a poet. But. Um, In poetry, you have to use beautiful words sometimes. And uh, that's what I did. I tried to write beautiful stuff about native culture. This is my first book. It was me and a little girl on it, on a cover. That little girl now is about 30. She was four at the time. And this is the most famous little poem, three line. I am the Indian, and the burden lies yet with me. That's, you can, you can say that too. And the, what, what I mean there is, uh, if we were going to write anything, if we're going to write beautiful stuff about native culture, it has to be us. We have to do that. And there are so many good writers in our community and other native communities. When I speak at the schools, I mean, when I was younger, I don't anymore, just, uh, just ask us only one. I used to tell them, if you are told to write something about your culture and uh, you do you do a book report when it's corrected ask for it and take it home and read it again and show it to your family because the story is beautiful a person writing a book report of their own culture is not going to put down anything that's bad they're going to put down what is good. When I was going to school, I did anyway. My words fall, arousing inquisitiveness, 
open to stir different opinions. If Indians today are not fictitious, then know them. I am not what they portray me. I am civilized. I am trying to fit in this century. Pray, meet me halfway. I am today's Indian. See? All that is not bad. That little poem is not bad. But I'm talking about today's Indian. And, um, Oh, I say like uh, some of the things we, uh, when I was a little girl, I used to do, uh, I lived in, uh, when I was nine years old, I lived in uh, Millbrook Reserve, Toro. And I was with my dad, I was nine years old. My mother had died when I was five. I was in a lot of foster homes. Then I ended up with my dad when I was nine years old. And we were riding in a truck, back up the truck, going to Shippenagadi. Indian Brook, they call it. It was a St. Dan mission. And my dad picked me up off the floor of the truck and lifted me up and said, look at the school. And I looked on a hill. That's where your two brothers are, he said. I said, it looks like a castle. In my nine-year-old mind, it was like a castle. So I kept that in my head, it was a castle. He didn't say anything. When I was 12 years old, I put myself in that castle. I wrote to an Indian agent and I told him, put me into school. And uh, I ended up in the school. I was in there four years. Well, my bubble burst. The beautiful castle with beautiful people in it is not a beautiful thing to think about. And. Uh, but I survived, and a lot of us survived. I guess we, uh, we talked to each other every day, I think, that's why. And every chance we had, we used Micmac. But we were forbidden to use it. And, uh, but, you know, we did it sneaky. Me and another girl would walk back and forth recess time, ten times back and forth along the road. And we're talking to Micmac to each other, but nobody hears us. And we don't tell anybody what we're doing. And the nun doesn't know, because we're all alone. That's how crazy little things we did. And others did them other ways. When I came out of school, I remember walking down that hill. I even wrote a poem called, I Found My Talk. The most famous poem, by the way, in all my books, that everybody seems to want in their books when they write, is the one that I lost my talk. I don't know if it's in uh, one of my books here. I lost my talk, the talk you took away when I was a little girl at Shibunagdi school. I speak like you, I create like you. Scrambled ballad about my word. That's the most famous poem. Because everybody all over Canada seems to want it. They want to put it in their book. This one I remember writing. Like lava from the heart, this wonder grows. Why was a tale not told? Admiration I know for the deeds of my people, their perceptions. I know their wants, I know their ways, I know their creeds, their love of customs, observance of rules. I got them days at Ketidu.
I've written seven books, five all by myself, two with other people. One, Gelusurtiek, there's lots of women in it. And there's another one, Mi'kmaq Anthology, there's other people in it. Five I wrote all by myself. Now I'm working on the eighth one. Oh yes, I sent three to the publisher. 30 songs, over 30 songs, over 100 poems, and a little mini bio, 40 pages. My publisher is the uh, same person as writes Cape Breton magazine, Mr. Kaplan. You know, sometimes uh, I read something in a book and it makes me angry, so I answer it. When you so discovered, you said I was a savage. You were the Christian and evangelized me. I accepted so readily because it was similar, like our way. I thought we were the same. I noticed you looked down on me as if I crawled on the ground. I knew I'll, I was like any other who walks. I knew because I believed in the super spirit. He helped us, us so long, we were many. We looked far into the future. That is why we believed in conservation. My heart cried every time I saw a new ship come. More and more came until we had to move together. Only my own, I was told. Reject your beliefs, I was told. Follow our way. I did. Do not speak unless we say, I did. I wonder why my nation is fading. I wonder why you are more, I am less. The question will remain until I too fade. That's for the new book. So I try to answer uh, all history, and I'm hoping better, better stuff comes out. And the only way we can do it is we do it ourselves. That's why I agreed to this, uh, what you're doing now. I am very ill. This morning, if you saw me, you would not recognize me. I was shaken from head to foot. My daughter gave me medicine. And I couldn't hardly walk. I cannot swallow. I got a bad heart. A lot of things. That's why I told you, you can come. <laughs> you know, there's a place over there, um, over in water, used to be clean one time, John Pauls they call it. Well, when I, I was married to a man that uh, drank once in a while, and uh, whoever he happened to be drinking with that day, I did not like, so I would take my children even the infant, maybe five or six of them, and go to John Paul's. It was, it was clean one time. And I'd be there all day with them. We have our food, we have panak, we have water, we have a little can, we fill it with clams, we cook them, and we spend the time all day. And it was, when we got home, they all wanted to go to bed because they were tired. I call it runaway. 
Early in my marriage, there was a lot of inebriation going on. I did not do this stuff, loving my children. I found ways to remove them from harm. During the summer months, I take them to John Paul's. That is an area on the reserve where there is water and coves. I would take all of the children, even the infant, along with their swimwear. We take a can, wire, water, and bannock, and food for the baby. We then go around the bend. Nobody saw us. Later on, while the older child watches the baby, we dig for clams. We clean, we boil, eat to our fill, then play splash games. The children were happy all day, no fear. When the sun is going down, we go home. All inebriates are gone. We are 